Hello and welcome to these series of lectures on learning Java by uh, doing uh, various interesting projects and uh, my goal of creating these series of lectures is to really show you how you can uh, uh, basically enjoy writing Java programs and at the end of the day Java just like any other language is a tool to get things done using your computer right you tell computer what you want to do and then the computer does it for you right all you have to do is learn how to tell computer what to do right so one of the basically the first project that I want to look at is creating a movie timeline and by this I mean uh, now sometimes you have multiple movie clips they are short clips and then what you want to do is combine them and uh, create a longer movie but then you know the duration of each movie clip and then you want to build the timeline for the, the movie after you combine them together right and uh, the timestamps that you want for the joint or the combined version of the movies you want them to show basically the start time not the durations right and uh, that's the goal of this project it's very easy it's just processing uh, some strings but along the way of this short project i'll discuss uh, some interesting topics so sometimes you have multiple movie clips uh, each movie clip has a few time properties right uh, basically or just have a few properties one is the title of the movie clip right a start timestamp and when we talk about movies it's usually timestamp that's the nomenclature timestamp means uh, the hours minutes and seconds usually that's the format of the timestamp so when the movie clip starts and the move when the movie clip ends right so when you have individual movie clips obviously each one starts at time zero and ends after the duration of the clip but when you combine them into a larger movie a movie clip might not start from zero right so for uh, let's write it down for individual clips uh, we know that the start time is zero and then uh, uh, again for individual clips end time is just the duration of the clip movie clip right and obviously a movie clip has duration and the duration is what we consider in seconds right so 200 seconds 1000 seconds etc right so we specify the duration in seconds and then obviously you can guess that we want to format it into hours minutes and seconds so we want to combine individual movie clips into one big movie and we know the duration of the title and the duration of each movie clip and after the combining we want to create a timeline right we need to convert duration to timestamps for for example a start timestamp so if we put movie clips uh, after one another right after each other then the start time uh, a start time of each movie clip is uh, different right this is especially useful when using YouTube. So if you upload a movie to a YouTube, to your YouTube channel, you realize that you can add timestamps. If your movie has different parts, right? Different sections, you can give the timestamp for the start of each section, right? So what is the goal of this very short project? We want to have or create a text file, which has the format of uh, the duration of a movie clip and the title. And the duration is formatted in hours, minutes, seconds. So obviously seconds go from 0 to 60, minutes go from 0 to 60, but hours could be anything, right? From 0 to 100, 200, doesn't matter, right? So hours might have more than two digits, but we want to strictly keep the minutes and seconds formatting to two digits. All right, so and then we parse this text file for each movie clip and then uh, convert the format to, to of the duration to let's say a start timestamps or end timestamps so we have we want to have some sort of flexibility on uh, the kind of uh, conversion that happens on the timestamps and then we want to add the flexibility to read multiple text files for multiple movie clips and then combine them into one big timeline and in that timeline the durations of the movie clips can be converted again to a start timestamps all right now we want to think about this obviously we're talking about java right so we want to think about solving the problem in an object oriented way right object oriented programming structure of the project so let's break it down into objects that take responsibility of some tasks right and usually we break down uh, what we want to do into multiple uh, 
basically objects and each object takes some responsibility and it's called it's one of the design principles in object oriented programming which is called separation of concerns separation of uh, concern what this means is that different classes take responsibility of different concerns and then we don't need to have only one class doing everything right so we want to have separation of concerns that means we break the task down into smaller pieces right and then we implement each small piece in a separate class we test it make sure that it's functional and eventually we put all of them together to get the job done right so let's call this project movie timeline project we want to have a class or basically we start with an enum which is timestamp a specifier we uh, we said that uh, the timestamp of a movie clip can be can refer to the start time of that movie clip in in a bigger movie or it could be just the duration of that movie clip or it could be the end point end time of that movie clip right so we have the specifier which is duration a start time end time and then the timestamp class, it's a very small class that represents a uh, timestamp of the movie clip based on, based on the specifier, right? So we just tell it what is the duration of the clip, what is the duration or the, and then it just converts the duration in seconds to hours, minutes, seconds, right? It's just a format converter. Movie clip is the class that represents a movie clip and movie clip has a, a start time, end time, or end timestamp, a duration, and then uh, based on, and it has also a title. And again, based on the specifier that we choose for a timestamp, uh, we can uh, we can decide how the two string method is going to work, right? And eventually we can put multiple movie clips together in a collection and call it a movie. So movie is just a collection, which is a list basically of uh, movie clips. Now the reason I'm not saying that it's a set because there is no uh, uh, there is no constraint on uh, not having duplicate movie clips right in a bigger movie so we do, we want to allow even uh, duplicate clips inside a bigger movie right so let's just start with the first part which is the timestamp the timestamp class represents the stamp of a movie clip. It's just you tell it how many seconds and it takes care of the conversion, right? It converts the duration uh, basically uh, in seconds to hours, minutes, and seconds. And again, minutes and seconds, we want to strictly keep them in two digits, but hours, it can be anything, right? We need to override the two string method and that's just uh, after the conversion we want to also have a string representation it can accept a specifier for duration a start time end time end time right um so let's head to eclipse and try to implement this timestamp class so this is my eclipse i'm going to create a, um, a maven project so i want to build with maven and uh, um uh, and then uh, create a simple project and then uh, let's say uh, com dot uh, 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 lectures and then artifact id let's call this movie timeline and note that usually in the name of the artifact we don't use underscore we typically use a, a hyphen right and for the version i'm going to set it to 1.0 and for the packaging i'm going to select jar all right so finish now when you create a, uh, a Maven project, uh, as you can see, the JRE by default is set to 1.5, right? And uh, obviously it looks, it finds the JDK 15 that I'm using. So I want to tell Maven, hey, uh, use um, basically JDK 15. So set the compiler level to uh, Java 15, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open the POM file here. And then in the properties, I'm going to set two Maven properties. One is maven.compiler.source. So treat the source as Java 15, okay? And another one, uh, maven.compiler.target as 15, right? And uh, now if I uh, save, and then right click on my project and go to maven uh, and then say uh, update project i select my project and now you see that it now uh, sets the compiler level to java 15 right 
which is my JDK Java 15. All right. So I, I assume you are familiar with the structure of the Maven project. So SRC main Java is where we put our source. SRC main resources, this is where we put our resources for the project. SRC test Java, SRC test resources. And then it compiles the source file when we run the compile uh, target or compile phase. And then the target is where the artifact of the project is built. So, and when, for example, um, we call the package phase, package the goal, then it put, creates the jar file and puts it in the target, right? If we want to add dependencies, we go to the POM XML file and then we can add dependencies. You see that by default, Maven just uh, adds the uh, uh, XML tags for the group ID, artifact ID, and then a version. These are the properties that we set. And again, uh, Eclipse provides this nice um, uh, graphical, uh, uh, basically, uh, representation of the XML file. And then you can add also the dependencies here, right? All right, so what we want to do, let's create a package, movie timeline. So uh, movie underscore timeline. And then here we're going to create a uh, maybe before creating our timestamp class, let's create an enum. So timestamp specifier. All right. So that's an enum, and in the enum we're going to have a, a start time, a end time, and a duration. And again, by convention, the enum is uppercase, right? And then obviously enums are full-blown classes, so we can have uh, constructors, private fields, etc. Uh, for example, one of the things is uh, to a string method, right? So we're not going to probably convert these to a string formats, but if you want, you can overwrite the two strings. And again, uh, to refresh your memory for enums, the constructor is private by default. You cannot expose the constructor of uh, an enum right it's not public it cannot be public and all the enums are uh, public static finals public static final right and you can always quickly check the type of these uh, classes uh, each one, each instance of the enum is a class right in the right side which is the outline so if i zoom in you see a start time is a static final and it's a green which means it's a uh, public and there is a little uh, white dot inside which means this is not a method this is a field right so green means in eclipse green means public a static f means final so everything inside all the enum items are public a static final classes right and then the constructor is uh, constructor is always private right so if i write uh, time stamp uh, a specifier something like this and then uh, uh, we have to terminate with a semicolon if we want to add stuff after this. So termination with semicolon, termination with uh, uh, semicolon is necessary if adding extra code in enum. If you don't add extra code, keep everything default. You don't need to terminate with semicolon. And now that I have the constructor, let's see what Eclipse tells us about the type of this constructor. You see it's red. Red means private and C means constructor, and then there is no white dot, so it's not a field, it's a method, right? If a symbol which is fully filled with color, it means it's a method. What if I put a public here? We get an error, and the error is uh, illegal modifier, illegal modifier for enum constructor, only private is permitted. So you cannot expose the constructor of the, of the enum, right? Uh, to uh, to to the outside, you cannot uh, make it public. So this is our timestamp specifier. The next thing is we go and build up our timestamp class. All right. Now in the timestamp, what we're going to have everything is integer, right? Minutes, seconds, hours. We're got, we're just going to deal with integers. We don't even need 32-bit integers. We can stick with short or uh, yeah, I guess short is uh, still enough, right? 16 bit, but for now, let's keep everything int by default. So time seconds, this is a total uh, duration, right? 
let's say uh, example is we tell it we have a movie clip that has 30 seconds of duration and we want to create a time stamp for it and then in obviously hours minutes and seconds right and these are the uh, actual uh, timestamp uh, format. So hours could be more and we're going to delimit them by uh, column and their minutes are going to be two digits and seconds are going to be two digits, right? And then we're going to expose a public constructor timestamp and then it takes an int time seconds, all right? So what are we going to do here? Um, we're going to first uh, uh, apply this uh, or uh, assign these uh, time seconds, time seconds, right? And the reason I'm using this dot because of uh, the name is uh, exactly the same. So this is a local variable, right? And this is a uh, field of the object, instance field. And uh, if we don't use this dot, then both are referring to the local variable so local variables if they have the same name as the instance field they can do shadowing so we prevent shadowing all right so we have this and the next step here is to um, convert the time seconds the total duration into hours so let's have a uh, private uh, do conversion right and then uh, uh, we're going to say hours is uh, um, time uh, seconds divided by 360 seconds and note that this is integer division so we're going to not return anything this is void and eventually we're going to have we're going to call this private method do conversion right so one hour is 360 seconds right and then uh, minutes is um, we're going to say time seconds minus hours times 60 divided by 60 and one uh, minute is uh, 60 seconds right so know that what we're doing know that this is an integer integer division which means uh, if time seconds is not fully divisible by 360 it only keeps the uh, the integer part right which is what we want and then uh, seconds is uh, basically time seconds minus hours times 60 minus um, hours times uh, uh, basically we have to put 360 so hours times 360 seconds minus minutes times 60 so this is one second is just one second right and then uh, the last part is to obviously overwrite the two string method so right click and then source uh, override or generate to a string let's just generate an empty to a string what do we want to do we want to create um, a string so a string dot format and we're going to have a percent s colon percent s and percent s and we're going to somehow convert these integers to basically um, to a strings, right? So let's see what happens if we say hours, minutes, and seconds. All right. So let's try it, and let's create a main method here and create a timestamp. Uh, timestamp one is new timestamp. Uh, time stamp let's say we have 10 seconds right and let's do a sys out on this time stamp one let's see what we get so 10 0 0 obviously we don't want this we want to at least have the minutes also two digits so let's say we have 70 seconds 10 but minutes are 1 instead of this we want to have 2 digits 0 1 right so what we want we want to have a method something that uh, takes these numbers and converts it in the nice way so what we're going to do I'm going to create a utils class and this is going to help a class which has some methods so what I'm going to say here is public a static a string two double digit and int number right 
So what are we want to do? Uh, a string result. Eventually we are going to returning this result. But then we're going to check. Um, so we're going to say that if number is uh, uh, less than 10, right? Then uh, uh, result is going to be 0 percent D uh, dot formatted number. So we're going to just add a uh, 0 at the beginning, right? Else we're going to say that uh, uh, result is just a percent D dot formatted number, right? And then, uh, so this, uh, so if there is one digit, we automatically add uh, another digit. If there are more than one digits, we just keep it. If I go to the timestamp, for hours, we don't care how many digits it is. For minutes, we do care. So we're going to say that utils dot to double digit minutes. And same for seconds. So utils dot to double digit seconds, right? So let's try this uh, class again. Now it works. 10 seconds, 1 minute, and 0. Now obviously we can check that. Um, um, so I think it's also better to uh, send hours also to this method because if it's uh, 1 digit, it actually also adds a 0. So it makes it at least 2 digits. Yeah, now it looks better, right? So 10 minute, 10 seconds, one minute is 70. Let's say 360 seconds. We have one hour. Let, yes, let's multiply it by 10. We have 10 hours. Let's multiply by 100. And then 100, let's add uh, uh, 2, 2, 2. So 100 hours, 3 minutes, and 42 seconds. So this looks pretty good. Let's try one last time. 2, 2, 2. And 42 seconds and 3 minutes, right? 3 times 60, 180 plus 42 is 2, 2, 2. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one. Hello, and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue our discussion on the, uh, on the project that we were working on, which was creating a Java project to basically uh, construct a timeline for a movie, which consists of multiple movie clips, and each movie clip has a duration and a name. And we saw that the very first thing is to have a class that represents a timestamp, and a timestamp is just you tell it the total seconds, and uh, that total seconds we call the time seconds, right? And this could be the duration of the movie clip, this could be the start time of a mo uh, movie clip in seconds. So, the, the time the, basically, the job of a timestamp is to convert some uh, number of seconds into the format of hours, minutes, and seconds. That's the, uh, that's the main job. And we saw that it was very easy, right? And uh, we just made sure that to override the two string method. And we wrote this uh, utility function to double digits and uh, seconds and minutes. We enforce that it's always represented by two digits. Even if the seconds or minutes is uh, a number less than 10, we made sure that we always add a zero. But hours, it could be... Uh, at least, uh, I even if I if it's one digit, we add a zero. If it's two digits or more, we just convert it directly to a string, right? Now we have this time a stamp class, and we have this time stamp a specifier, which is how we want to eventually build up the timeline of the movie, which has multiple movie clips based on the duration of the movie clips or the sections, a start time of the sections or end time of the sections. Now we want to go and write our movie clip, which represents one piece of an uh, entire movie, right? And a movie clip uh, basically the represents the information of one piece of the uh, movie and has a title or a name. We can call it a name for that section of the movie, the duration, a start time, end times and also total time, which we always consider in seconds, right? And then the string representation of the movie clip is going to be the timestamp that we choose. So we don't need to worry about this part anymore because we already have implemented this formatting as a timestamp. That's again, another thing about the separation of concerns. So when we think about 
a project in terms of the object oriented implementation we write smart classes each class deals with a separate concern right so when we want to call the to a string or convert a movie clip to a string format we have to generate a, a string which has the format of the hours minute seconds this could be again based on the specifier we choose which is the duration a start or end timestamp the timestamp automatically converts gives us this nice formatting and then the title right now one thing that we have to note here is that when we combine movie clips to create a big movie right so each section might have an offset from the start time from the zero seconds right so generally if you have a movie clip by itself an individual movie clip it starts at time zero right but then if a movie clip comes after another movie clip or basically the section two of a movie it starts after section one right the start time of the section two is base is not at time zero right so we can define an offset in seconds right so when exactly this clip starts in a big movie and then the movie clip should also be able to parse a text file that includes this formatting a string into an actual movie clip object right so these are the things that we have to implement in a movie clip class all right so let's head to eclipse and try to implement this so back to our project so we had this movie timeline uh, project and uh, we're building with Maven and we implemented the timestamp, timestamp specifier, which is an enum and this utility class, which had this uh, utility method two double digit. All right. So let's create a new class. We call it the uh, movie clip. All right. So this represents our movie clip and uh, we're going to have integer uh, total seconds, right? so this is the total duration in seconds this is the total duration of the clip and then uh, int uh, offset which is also seconds this is the start offset in seconds so the movie clip might not start from zero it might start at some later time right and then obviously it has a formatting hours minutes and seconds right this is again for duration and then um, we're going to have two timestamp. Obviously, a movie clip can have a, a start timestamp and end timestamp. All right. So these are the actual timestamps. Timestamps. Obviously, we can also have a timestamp for duration, but um, uh, uh, basically, uh, total seconds is already duration, and we can always immediately pass this to a timestamp to create a uh, timestamp for the duration itself and the other thing that we need we need to also uh, have a timestamp a specifier so a specifier and now we're going to have a public constructor public uh, movie clip int uh, total seconds um, or uh, basically what we want to do it's very easy when you play a movie in your movie player obviously it's very easy to it shows based on the hours, minutes, and seconds, right? So let's uh, pass those as the constructors. Hours, int minutes, and int seconds. And we're going to also pass in a timestamp specifier, how we want to construct this. So this dot hours is hours. Again, we want to avoid shadowing because the local variable names are exactly the same as the instance variables. This dot minutes is um, minutes and this dot seconds is second and this dot uh, a specifier is a specifier all right let's close this all right now let's set up some setters and getters so what we want to do uh we want to be able to change uh, the timestamp specifier uh, on the fly so uh, one thing that we can do, we can have a constructor that doesn't take a timestamp specifier. And obviously what makes sense is that the default is the duration, right? So uh, timestamp specifier dot duration. So if you don't specify the uh, timestamp, the format that we want to print, whether it corresponds to the uh, basically uh, a start time or end time or duration, the default is duration. Now, what else do we want? Um, 
we want to be able to set the specifier so public and let's return the movie clip a reference to the movie clip set uh, time stamp specifier all right so time stamp specifier specifier this dot time uh, specifier is a specifier and return a reference to this all right so this is a setter and then uh, we, we want to also be able to maybe change the duration on the fly so again we return a reference to the object itself set uh, total seconds int total seconds and this dot total seconds is uh, uh, total seconds right and obviously once we do this we should also uh, once we pass the hours minute and seconds we should also calculate the total seconds which is just hours times 360 plus minutes times 60 plus seconds right and again the reason we're passing hours minutes seconds is that when you look at it look at your movie clip uh, the individual movie clip in a movie player it always shows in the format of hours, minutes, and seconds. So it's very easy to figure out what is the duration in terms of hours, minutes, and seconds. All right, so these total seconds, and then um, uh, basically hours is uh, total seconds uh, uh, divided by 360, and minutes is uh, total seconds minus hours minus uh, hours times uh, 360 divided by 60 and seconds is uh, basically total seconds minus hours times 360 minus uh, minus uh, minutes times 60 right this is standard stuff and then we return a um, reference to this object okay and uh, what about uh, the offset so we want to be able to also change the offset and it's good to also initialize it but we know that if we don't pass it in the constructor the offset is zero by default right so let's assume that we don't really want to deal with the offset at the beginning because this class represents an individual movie clip right so the offset is by default zero and in the second uh, constructor, I just call the first constructor, right? Hours, uh, this uh, hours, and then uh, minutes, and then uh, seconds, and then uh, timestamp specifier duration. We want to go with the default, right? So the default, uh, uh, the default is that uh, we want to print the timestamps as the duration. All right. Okay, so um, let's also make sure that we can change the offset on the fly because this is very important. So we return a reference to the object, set offset. So int offset and offset in seconds. This dot offset is offset and return this. All right. And then uh, these are the setters, and then uh, uh, we can say uh, we we want maybe we want to also get the total seconds. So public uh, int get total seconds, right? And return uh, uh, basically total seconds. All right. And then uh, what else do we want? So a start uh, timestamp and end timestamp. So public get a start time a stamp right and then uh, uh, get a start time stamp uh, what we can say is that if uh, uh, basically a start time stamp is null if it has not been initialized we're going to initialize it with uh, a start time stamp is new time stamp right so what we're going to say is uh, offset plus uh, uh, get total seconds, right? So a start is we know that the movie clip might have an offset, so uh, this returns a timestamp. 
So uh, return start timestamp. So if it hasn't been initialized, we just initialize it with the offset of the movie clip plus uh, actually we just the offset, right? And then uh, we can have the same for the get end timestamp. A timestamp for the end. So if um, end timestamp has not been initialized, uh, end timestamp and and then end. We're going to say that timestamp, we create a new timestamp object, but the end time is whatever the initial offset is plus get total seconds, right? Remember, in the constructor of the timestamp, we pass the total seconds. Okay? So, so far, so good. What about the two strings? So, how do we basically overwrite the two string, which is the most important thing that we have to do? So generate to a string, let's uh, just create an empty to a string. What do we want to do? So um, let's say a string str and then return str. And we need to initialize this string. So again, uh, the to a string format is going to be uh, 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 let's also have a, a string for name so we forgot this this is also important name of the movie clip or title so this dot name is name and here uh, uh, a string name let's also give it define it as a string and then we pass in the name here all right everything looks good and then uh, we're going to switch, uh, remember what we want to do. We want to have the timestamp and then the name, right? And this timestamp can correspond to the duration, which has been formatted as a timestamp. It could correspond to the initial time uh, or the end time, right? So we're going to switch on the basically uh, a specifier and we're going to either have a, a start time so a start time, okay, and uh, basically, uh, okay, let's remove this. So switch, we're going to have a case on uh, a start time, and then eventually we break. So what are we going to do with the start time? We're going to say that... Um, str is uh, basically uh, so we're going to have percent s percent s dot formatted and the first one now is going to be get a start timestamp and then the name right so we pass in the and it automatically converts it to the string by calling the to a string all right and then uh, uh, case uh, end timestamp basically the same story here but here we say get end timestamp and then uh, uh, default is going to be uh, the basically the duration so uh, so uh, basically new timestamp right but then here we pass in get total seconds so, and this creates a timestamp for duration. So, create a uh, formatted uh, timestamp for the duration. We could uh, define the duration also as a timestamp, but that's really not necessary. Okay, so let's uh, test whatever we have so far. So, let's have a main method here, and I'm going to create a movie clip clip one is a new uh, movie clip let's call it uh, I don't know Avengers Endgame and then hours let's say it's two hours 35 minutes and 62 seconds right and then let's do a sys out on the clip one uh, okay so uh, now, as you can see, two hours, 36 seconds, 36 minutes, and uh, two hours, 35 minutes, 62 seconds. It's smart enough to understand that uh, 
62 is more than 60 that's why it adds one to the minutes right so 36 minutes and two seconds and the reason this smartness happens is because we are creating the time stamps right the two string based on the basically we are the two string is based on the get start time end time these are the time stamp objects and in the time stamp we pass the total seconds right and uh, uh, and the timestamp class automatically knows how to convert this to a correct format. So if somebody puts 350 minutes, that's fine. It knows how to convert it, right? So this is a very a smart move. And that's always one of the best practices to, uh, to implement in this way. So you have a class that already works. So you always refer to that instead of trying to uh, uh, basically um, uh, basically re redoing the code we just ask the timestamp give it the total seconds and it automatically knows how to properly uh, convert this so let's say two two hours 35 minutes and five seconds all right and now by default it so it prints the name and this is the duration right so um, let's create a new uh, so let's uh, clip one dot uh, set a specifier set timestamp specifier let's say this is the start time and uh, let's do a sys out again uh, clip one now this is not going to change anything it's uh, basically <sighs> So uh, the question is what happened here? So clip one, set timestamp specifier, start time, and uh, uh, basically we said that when we use a start time, by default, a movie clip has a zero offset. That's why now it's printing the time here. Let me zoom in. This time is the start timestamp. Previously, this was the duration, which was formatted as a timestamp. Now this is the start. Now note that what happens if I set offset to let's say uh, 21 seconds and do a sys out again. Now this timestamp is going to be 21 seconds because our our timestamp is um, uh, basically uh, it should be 21 seconds. So why are we still getting zero? Get a start timestamp. So set offset. Uh, offset this offset um, that's okay that's because uh, uh, so when we set the offset uh, uh, we should also uh, change the timestamps right so uh, maybe it's better to uh, it's better to always uh, uh, create the timestamp um, we can do this now it works from 21 seconds right so if I set the offset to 210 seconds it automatically converts to 3 minutes and 30 seconds so this means that because the specifier is now a start time it means that this movie clip starts at this time point if it's part of a bigger uh, movie right at three minutes 30 seconds into the movie this movie clip starts right and we can do the same with the uh, uh, specifier uh, end right so end time and uh, uh, okay let's print this and now it, when we set the end time, what happens? It adds the offset, which was three minutes, 30 seconds to the duration, which was originally the duration. So two hours, three plus 35 is 38 and five seconds plus 30 is 35 seconds, right? And so this is how you can uh, specify the, the, this uh, movie clip and it automatically takes care and, of the conversion. And as you can see, most of the load is basically passed to the, uh, most of the job of this timestamp conversion is passed again to the, our timestamp class, which has already been implemented and tested. And that's always the best approach, right? Now, the last step is to create a parser, create a parser, 
for the text files and we will do it in the next lecture i hope you enjoyed this one please stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one hello and welcome to another uh, tutorial in this tutorial i'm going to continue our discussion on the java project that we are working on to create a timeline timeline of uh, a, a collection of movie clips and automatically format them based on the specifier which could be the duration a start and end and so far we have created our timestamp specifier which was an enum timestamp class which uh, takes care of the formatting of the timestamps and then the movie clip which is one piece or one section of an entire movie and we said that the uh, movie clip can uh, basically have a name or title and then the total duration in seconds offset which means uh, at what point inside the movie this uh, this section starts and then the duration formatted in terms of hours minutes and seconds and then uh, uh, timestamp a start timestamp and timestamp these are just the timestamps that we keep track of and then timestamp specifier specifier and this specifier uh, basically tells us when we call the to a string how the timestamp is printed is it going to be based on the start time end time or uh, basically uh, the duration and it's going to automatically be formatted as uh, seconds minutes and hours right seconds and minutes definitely have two digits hours can have at least two digits or more right now um, uh, going back to our uh, Java uh, Eclipse and uh, so I'm going to do a quick rename instead of saying offset I'm going to say refactor rename offset uh, seconds right so i'm going to make sure that i know i mentioned that this is given in seconds right and then we're going to also set up a uh, uh, so public uh, uh, setter for the if we want to s uh, set the total duration in seconds so set total seconds uh, int total seconds so this total seconds is total seconds and then we have to do the conversion hours is uh, uh, okay we already had this okay so set total second yeah so we already had this so there is no need to have it we already have a setter for total seconds for offset and then um, ideally when we set the offset we have to also update the timestamps right but then because we have these uh, 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 get a start time uh, basically um, uh, we can uh, so we can instead of uh, updating the start times when we call these uh, we have to basically update them when we change the offset so when we change the offset we're going to uh, uh, update the start timestamp and end timestamp and then uh, when we get the start timestamp what we're going to do is uh, uh, obviously originally this can be null so if a start timestamp is null we're going to initialize it again with the uh, with here initialize it with the original offset which could be zero or more and then uh, um, same for the end so if end timestamp is null we're going to just uh, immediately initialize it okay and let's check to make sure that everything works fine so we have a main here and originally we have a movie clip avengers endgame and know that we're not uh, specifying how the title is going to be formatted is it going to be capitalized for each word or it's going to be all uppercase lowercase we're just assuming that the string is given we print the name or title exactly as it, as it is given but then we said that uh, the duration is specified as hours minutes and seconds and even if the seconds exceed 60 let's say uh, 598 it automatically prints uh, does the correct conversion and prints it that's because the to a string uses the timestamp class and the total duration is passed so it knows how to convert the total duration in the correct timestamp okay 
So we initially specified the duration, two hours, 35 minutes, five seconds, and that's the name. And then uh, we changed the specifier to the start time. And a movie clip by default starts at zero, right? And then we set the offset to 201 seconds. Uh, basically what happens here is that this 201 seconds then gets translated into hours, minutes and seconds again. So it's three minutes, three times 60 is 180 plus 30 seconds, which is 210. Correct. And now the start, I know that the uh, specifier timestamp specifier is still a start time. So, um, so the start time is now 3.30. So originally the timestamp corresponds to the duration. And now this is the start time. This is the start time. And finally, uh, we change the specifier to the end time. And when we print it, what happens? This timestamp corresponds to the end time, including the offset. So originally it starts from 3 minutes 30 seconds in. So that's the start time and then the duration is 2 hours, 35 minutes, 5 seconds and eventually we end up with this time stamp for the end time, alright? Alright, now the next step is to be able to parse from a text file or basically in general a string. So how do we parse? So we're going to have a public a static uh, method that parses a, a string. So parse a string. A string... Uh, 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 str for example and eventually it's going to return a movie clip and this uh, string again the uh, the format of the string is going to be uh, basically some hours and then minutes is going to be two or even one that's fine and then seconds and then a space or more spaces and then the name right and obviously there could be some trailing spaces or uh, after that there is obviously a backslash n for now we are going to avoid that or omit that assume that there is no backslash n right all right so how do we do this now obviously we're going to immediately create a uh, um, temp a string and say str dot uh, trim so what does what the trim does is uh, returns a string whose value is the string with all leading and trailing spaces removed. There is also a strip uh, returns a string whose value is in with all the leading and trailing white spaces removed. So we can use in this case we can use trim or a strip. Trim is uh, uh, a space is defined as any character whose uh, okay. So we're going to use trim here. So we remove the remove uh, white spaces leading or trailing so leading or trailing white spaces for now we're going to assume that there is no backslash n and then what we're going to do we're going to iterate until uh, we get the uh, basically uh, basically the the first space right so we can uh, uh, and then uh, after that, uh, we're going to uh, uh, we're going to figure out what is the size of the string, which is the timestamp format, right? And then it's definitely going to be in the format of hours, minutes, seconds. So um, well, let's say for int i equals zero, i less than uh, temp dot length i plus plus. Uh, if uh, so basically we're going to have int index right which is originally zero uh, if um, um, basically uh, temp dot char at index i is uh, equal equal uh, um, white space something like this then uh, we're going to say that index is i and then we break for now let's return null right so get rid of this uh, compilation error so what we're doing here is that um, uh, we're trying to figure out at index zero which uh, uh, because we're removing the trailing and leading uh, white spaces but then we are going to figure out when we hit the first white space because uh, between the name and the format, there could be more than white space, more than one white space, right? So once we get that index, we're going to uh, split, uh, split the timestamp, 
and name so we're going to say that a string uh, basic or we can we don't need to split it we can say uh, uh, timestamp str is uh, um, basically uh, temp dot sub string and then we can use the the format sub string beginning and end index and note that the end index is basically uh, not ex uh, is exclusive so from uh, index 0 and uh, basically the index right so this goes from character 0 to character uh, uh, basically uh, n minus 1 because we when we if we have so this is index 0 once we hit the first uh, space we want to get from 0 to index minus 1 right so this is uh, our timestamp and then a string obviously the name is um, uh, uh, it's going to be uh, whatever uh, comes after that right so we're going to say that temp dot sub string uh, beginning is index note that this goes from 0 to index minus 1 and then we get from index now obviously we might have some uh, uh, leading uh, spaces so we're going to trim it right and this is our name now we need to do a conversion right uh, so we're going to say that uh, int array args is a timestamp str a split on the colon and uh, basically um, this returns a, uh, a string right and then we're going to return a new movie clip and the name is name ours is uh, basically integer uh, parse int uh, it's going to be args 0, right? Args 0 is hours, and then uh, args 1 is minutes, and uh, args 2 is seconds, all right? So this is how we're going to basically parse a string in this format with uh, some spaces or whatever, it doesn't matter. We're going to parse it into a movie clip, which has the correct uh, timestamp. So let's try that so parsing a string maybe let's uh, remove the previous one so I'm going to say that uh, movie clip clip one is uh, movie clip parse a string let's say uh, zero hours two minutes uh, 37 seconds and some uh, arbitrary name so when we convert this, uh, uh, and then we're going to do a sysout on the clip one. Let's see. So two minutes, 37 seconds, zero hours, some arbitrary name. So it looks like uh, we're doing fine. And as you can see, we didn't really need to specify two digits. It doesn't make sense because uh, it's easier to do this. And uh, the class automatically takes care of uh, making sure that it's uh, two digits now even if I have three digits here I believe it's going to work fine and it's going to do the correct uh, formatting right so two minutes 370 seconds is uh, 2 times 60 which is 120 plus 370 which is 490 so eight minutes eight times 60 is 480 plus 10 is 490 so this is the correct conversion and obviously we can have uh, 0, 1, 0, which is 10 hours, and 10 hours, 8 minutes, 10 seconds, everything looks good, all right? So the gist of it here is that uh, this works fine. Again, even if the seconds are one digit, the conversion is going to work fine, 2 minutes, 3 seconds, right? And note that we didn't specify the uh, specifier, and the reason here is that this string has to be the duration. It cannot be because we are parsing an individual movie clip. So it cannot be a start time or end time, right? It has to be the duration. And the assumption here is that the, the, uh, the default offset is zero. That's why I'm using the constructor that takes the default timestamp, which is the duration, right? And this has to be the duration, has to be the duration format. 
All right, now uh, everything is set here. Uh, we can uh, parse a uh, uh, one, another thing that we can do now we can parse from a text file so parse from a text file so in the resources let's say I create a file uh, uh, test1.txt and here I'm going to basically uh, copy this thing obviously we don't need to double quotes here and then uh, this is the duration this is the name and then what we're going to do is uh, the way we're going to do it is obviously in order to read from the file we're going to create a file uh, file one is new file and a string path name I'm going to use the relative path from the working directory when JVM is launched and in the Eclipse if you look at the run configuration in the arguments you see that Eclipse, when it runs your Java application, the default working directory is your project folder, right? So the project folder is the default working directory, and I have to go inside the SRC. And I believe if you just copy the whole thing and paste it, it's copy. Uh, uh, this is another shortcut in Eclipse. It uh, correctly copies that. And then uh, test1.txt, right? So this is my file. Obviously, I can do a sysout on the file to make sure that everything works fine. Yes, SRC main, okay. And then we want to read it line by line because the assumption here is that each line uh, uh, basically has the, the description of a movie clip, the duration, and the name. So we're going to create a scanner. A scanner, new a scanner and we're going to specify the file as the input and then we're going to say while a scanner has next line we're going to say that um, now this is obviously going to uh, throw exceptions right so we put it in try and then while a scanner has next line uh, um, or we could uh, because we have to also call the close so maybe let's create a use a try with resources so try a scanner a scanner new a scanner with file one file one here so it automatically calls the close and we can also catch the exceptions that fine that's fine file not found exception and then once we want to iterate, we use the, because the scanner uh, implements iterable, right? So if I go to the uh, scanner class, iter basically it implements iterator. So it has a, uh, has next and next or next line. While a scanner uh, has a next line, I want to read it line by line. So um, I can say, uh, uh, I'm going to create a movie clip clip is new uh, movie uh, or basically we are going to parse it from the string so a scanner dot next line and the good thing here is that a scanner automatically removes the backslash n character so uh, basically removes backslash n at the end that's why when we parsed from a string we didn't bother looking at the end and see if there is a return or line separator character at the end because a scanner or, uh, automatically removes it and we can just do a sysout here clip all right uh, let's see and as you can see we can uh, uh, create a movie clip and uh, um, if I have more let's say uh, movie one and uh, movie two and then this is uh, um, zero uh, 25 minutes and uh, uh, 22 seconds this is one hour zero minutes three seconds right and obviously we can have a spaces that's fine I believe uh, the code should be able to handle it so let's run this and as you can see, we are able to parse them. The first movie is uh, two minutes, uh, three seconds in. Uh, movie one, movie two, so two minutes, three seconds. And after that, 25 minutes, 22 seconds, one, uh, uh, one hour, three seconds, right? 
so uh, this was the whole implementation of the movie clip and I think right now it's in a very good shape and next we're going to create a class movie which is a collection of the movie clips and that takes care of uh, reading these from a text file know that these are the durations right and um, once we put them together after each other the and we want to change the time stamp to a start time some other calculation some extra calculation must happen right because uh, the second movie has an offset because of the duration of the first movie similarly the third movie has an offset because of the duration of the second and first movies and we're going to implement uh, this kind of offset calculation so I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue our discussion on the project of uh, creating a, uh, a, a basically a Java project that uh, creates uh, movie timelines for us based on combining the duration of different movie clips, right? So we looked at the uh, timestamp class that creates the and nicely formats the timestamps that we want and this could correspond to the start time, end time or the duration of a movie clip. We looked at the movie clip which basically has the name and then a duration. It can have an offset and obviously it has timestamps for the start and end time, right? And then we can tell it what kind of uh, uh, a specifier uh, we're having, right? Is it the start time of the movie clip and, and but then we, uh, we in the constructor, we give the total duration in hours, minutes, seconds, because it's very easy to get this information in a movie player. And then automatically calculates the total seconds and based on that and the offset, it can calculate the timestamps for the start and end. Now we want to create a movie class and a movie class again is supposed to be a collection of movie clips. And when we add movie clips, right, they are put together in sequence. So the second movie clip a start doesn't start at zero seconds, right? It starts right at the end of the first movie clip. So the movie class, when it adds a new clip, it has to also calculate the offset of this particular movie clip so it keeps track of the total elapsed time as we add more movie clips and it automatically adjusts the offset of each movie clip and this is very important and we have to uh, make sure that we implement this correctly so it has a timestamp specifier right if we want to export the movie and create it creates a timeline of the movie clips for us then we can tell it the the timeline is based on the start time of the clips end time of the clips or the duration right it can save the timeline um, to file with correct a stamp specifier again so we want to have a method to save to a file based on the uh, timestamp specifier that we provide it can parse a text file right and create a collection of movie clips basically we give it a text file that has the information of moving movie clips and um, each uh, movie clip uh, in the text file is represented by the timestamp of the duration and the name or the title of the clip and then we can also read text files and it creates a uh, movie clips and append them to the the currently the current movie clips that we have in the project right so this is a uh, um, something that we're going to implement so let's head to eclipse now in our uh, movie timeline project so far we have the utils timestamp specifier which is an enum timestamp and movie clip and uh, previously we looked at the movie clip right and um, before heading to the movie class i'm going to make a few changes first of all here in the so we wrote a for loop to iterate over the characters after removing the leading and trailing uh, 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 white spaces in the parse string, right? That takes a, a string of the name and title of the basic timestamp and the title and the timestamp is supposed to be the duration and then creates a movie clip. But instead of creating a for loop here and manually iterate through, we can have one of the methods of the string. So um, int index so let me just comment this out also and we can say int index remember we want to start from the first character and find the first uh, white space right so we can say temp dot index of the character is going to be a white space 
So this is the basically uh, a better approach instead of manually writing a for loop. And if you look at the documentation of the index of method, it says returns the index within this string of the first occurrence of the specified character. So we are specifying a white space and we are interested in the first occurrence of this character, right? Where the index is. And uh, yeah, so this is a better approach here. So if I, again, if run this uh, example and it should work fine. So the default uh, timestamp specifier is a uh, uh, duration, right? And we said that when we parse a string to a movie clip, it's supposed to be the timestamp supposed to be the duration. Two minutes, three seconds. And obviously we said that if uh, the seconds or minutes pass or passed or above 60, the two string method automatically works fine. That's just because um, uh, we're using the timestamps, right? When we convert to a string and uh, the timestamp class takes the total seconds and automatically converts it. So uh, two minutes, which is uh, 160 plus 300 seconds, which is, uh, uh, I guess, five minutes. So five and two is seven minutes. And this is great, right? So now let's create our movie class, movie. And the movie class is going to obviously have a name. So movie name, for example, and then uh, um, what else? The, so movie is going to have a uh, uh, array list. So array list of uh, movie clips, right? Uh, movie clips. So this is a list of clips and we add, and then uh, we're going to also have an integer total seconds elapse, right? And we initiate, initiate it with, uh, initialize it with zero, right? So as we add movie clips, we have to also update this total seconds. And this is basically the offset of the next movie clip that we add. So let's create a constructor, public movie. And it's going to get a string and of name, and then uh, um, and then uh, uh, we're going to also have a timestamp specifier, timestamp specifier, a specifier, right? And then uh, uh, timestamp specifier, a specifier. So we're going to uh, take a timestamp, and we're not going to initialize this specifier. So this dot movie name, and let's just keep it as name. I think that's easier. So this dot name is name, and this dot specifier is a specifier, right? And uh, uh, and then we're going to also uh, initialize this movie clip. This dot movie clips is new array list, right? So this is the initialization. We have to provide the name and then the specifier, right? The specifier tells the movie clip um, when it uh, exports the movie timeline to a text file, how it's going to print the timestamps, right? So a specifier is how the timestamps of the movie clips are going to be printed in the, right? In the text file. Movie clips, this is just a list of uh, clips that we put in sequence, added in sequence, right? So the sequence matters. That's why we're using an array list, not a set. And again, we can have duplicate movie clips. So uh, we shouldn't prevent uh, a duplication, right? So a string name, this is the name of the movie. It doesn't matter. But I think when if we save to, if save to file, we can use the name as the name of the file, for example. Right, so we want to have some setters. For example, public uh, movie. Let's return a reference to movie set name, and then a string name. And this dot name is name, and return this. Right. So we set the name, and obviously we want to also have the timestamp specifier. So public movie set timestamp specifier and uh, uh, timestamp specifier, a specifier, this dot a specifier is a specifier and return this, all right? So, and then obviously the next most important step is to add uh, movie clips. So this is the most important method here. So add, so let's write it most important method. And obviously after that, we have to override the to a string, override to a string 
right these are the important steps so public movie clip let's return a reference to the uh, uh, object movie add movie clip and then uh, movie clip let's call this clip right so what are we going to do let's see a step one and then uh, we're going to have a few steps a step two and then a step three eventually we're going to return a reference to this right let's get rid of the compilation error right and then in a step one um, we're going to set the clip timestamp specifier remember each movie clip also needs to know the information about the specifier so uh, set a specifier set uh, the format of uh, timestamp for the clip right so clip dot set uh, timestamp specifier specifier so when we apply or set the timestamp specifier for the entire movie it also gets applied to each movie right the next thing is uh, we have to keep track of when this clip is getting added, right? So some movie clips might have been already added. So this total uh, seconds elapsed uh, has changed, right? So we have to uh, fix the uh, start time. So set the offset of the clip. So clip dot set offset and then total times elapse, right? After that, we're going to update the total time elapse, which then becomes the offset for the next movie clip. So total time elapse plus equals uh, clip dot get total seconds. So we get the total duration of the current uh, clip and update the total length of the movie. So the next clip that gets added uh, and the, the offset is adjusted accordingly, right? And eventually we return a reference, return a reference to the current movie object. And that's just because then this is more like a builder design pattern. So we can cascade this add movie clip methods, right? And the two string. So we're going to override the two string method. So a uh, source um, uh, generate to a string. Okay. So what's our plan for the to a string? So for the to a string method, what we're going to do is, uh, again, uh, we're going to have a, uh, uh, basically, uh, call the to a string on each movie clip, right? So we iterate through the, um, so let's create a string builder. A string builder sp new a string builder right and then eventually we call the sp to a string and then uh, for uh, movie clip clip in a uh, uh, movie i guess uh, movie clips uh, clips so uh, for clip uh, sp dot append um, so we can also use the set the name. So uh, before going into iteration, so let's finish the iteration here. We're going to say uh, uh, clip dot to a string, clip dot to a string, and then we're going to also append a backslash n or system dot line separator, system dot line separator, right? And then uh, um, we're going to say sp dot append. Uh, uh, let's do something like um, movie and then percent s that's the name and then uh, formatted it's going to be the name and then obviously uh, backslash n we do a backslash n as well um, so uh, and then we can also sp dot uh, so let's also assume that each movie clip is at least 10 characters right so the time time stamp is itself is two and then four six eight characters so let's say i don't know 15 so um let's initial initialize the some uh, initial length because the default length i think it's 16 characters which is way too small so the string builder gets uh, resized quickly so let's prevent that that's a little bit more about the optimization so we're going to say uh, movie clips dot length or size dot size times 15 characters so based on how many movie clips we have we assume that each one has at least 15 characters 
I think that's a better approach here for optimization. And then let's also append a line. So let's go a star dot repeated. And then uh, um, maybe it's better to have a, a string str and uh, put this outside. Okay. And then append str. We can also uh, append the system dot line separator here. So based on the length of the str, we're going to say str.length, right? Based on the length of this string, we're going to add stars in the next line. And after that, we're going to add the movie clip. So let's uh, do a main and test this. Um, let's see. So we're going to create, uh, we had this movie clip here. We're going to parse it from a string. And then uh, let's say two minutes, three seconds. Uh, let's create another clip, clip two, and uh, uh, some other movie clip. It's added. Let's say it's one hour, um, I don't know, thir 13 minutes and two seconds, right? And then we create a movie. movie is new movie and the name is going to be my uh, uh, the join joined movie clips and then the specifier is going to be let's say uh, duration and then we're going to say movie dot add movie clip clip one dot add the movie clip let's go to the next line add movie clip clip two all right or we could just put them in the same line that's fine let's do a sys out on the movie all right let's see what we get so um uh So right now we're getting the join movie clips. Uh, oh, okay. So uh, we forgot to do something. Um, in a step four, we actually should add it to the list. So um, movie clips dot add clip, and obviously a step five is to return. So we have to also add it. So let's see. And uh, uh, here we're appending and then we have to also append the uh, system line separator all right so let's run this again and we have our movie joined the uh, movie clips that's the name this is some stars which is exactly the length of the header and then we have uh, the first uh, and remember uh, the timestamp specifier specifies how these uh, movie clips are going to be printed in terms of their timestamp and right right now we're setting it to duration when we parse the string we said that we always have to do the duration that's the only way but here when we export because we already know the duration of each one we can choose what kind of timestamp we're going to use duration is obvious because uh, nothing changed two minutes three seconds one hour 13 minutes two seconds that's fine but notice what happens if i set it to a start time and this is mostly what we want to do right and so the first movie clip starts at zero but then the second one has so the movie class automatically calculates the offset and updates it each time we add a new clip so the second movie starts at the end of the first movie, right? Its offset is the duration of the first movie, which is two minutes, three seconds. Exactly, right? So let's add one more clip here. Clip three is going to be uh, one hour or maybe uh, two hours, one minute and uh, 21 seconds. The third movie clip. And then we're going to add the movie clip, add movie clip, clip three. All right, let's run this. And now you see we're printing based on the start time. So the first one starts at zero. The second one starts at the duration of the first one, which is two minutes, three seconds. 
The third one starts at the combined duration of the first and second, which should be one hour, 15 minutes, five seconds. One hour, 15 minutes, five seconds. And all we're doing here is that we're adjusting the offset by keeping track of how much total seconds has elapsed since the first clip was added, right? That's why we have this get total seconds. So the two strings seems to work fine. And now we have to implement two things. So the first one is to parse text file or uh, or maybe first let's uh, save to file. So public um, save to file and then a string file name, file name. Okay. So, uh, and it's void, it's not going to return anything. We can set it to Boolean and return true if the save is successful, but for now we're not going to return anything. So we're going to create a file, file, uh, uh, text file. So new, um, basically uh, file, a string path name. So we pass in the file name and then uh, um, we're going to use a try with resources, trial file writer from Java IO writer, new file writer, and we pass in a file. And this is going to automatically uh, set the close and let's catch the exception, IO exception. Uh, we can return false if we were returning a Boolean. So file writer, all we have to do is say writer.write and a string and we're going to call the uh, this dot to a string right to a string so uh, let's save to file save to file let's check this in the src main resources i'm going to say save this uh, movie that i have to file as i mentioned before if you click on the folder that you have in eclipse and click copy and paste it in the editor it actually paste the path, which is a very useful thing. So uh, test2.txt. You want to save it as a text file. So let's run this. So uh, let's refresh here and test2.txt. And as you can see, uh, we have successfully saved the movie to the file, right? based on the start timestamp. Now we could actually go further and add more uh, uh, information here. So movie, and then we can say timestamp uh, format percent %s. And here we just pass in the specifier. It automatically calls the to a string method. So let's run this again. Timestamp format is a start time and it automatically expands these uh, 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 stars, right? And then, uh, uh, so that's one thing, or we could put this on the next line, that's also possible. So um, let's see, let's copy this. So str2. Um, Or maybe let's just keep it uh, as this one for now. I think that's fine. So timestamp format. Um, timestamp format is uh, a start time. All right. All right, this looks good. Now the last step is uh, to be able to parse a text file. So parsing a, a text file that has a list of movie clips based on the duration, right? Or uh, it could be other things like the start time, doesn't matter. So public, so what is this method? When, whenever we have parsing, obviously it's going to be a static method because it shouldn't depend on the state. So public uh, static, and it's going to, after parsing, it's going to give us a movie object, right? Parse uh, text file, for example, and then a string uh, file name. 
but then we're going to give it two timestamp specifiers one is what is the timestamps that are in the text file for each movie clip so timestamp specifier input specifier and then we then we want to say okay when you parse these timestamps how are you going to change this do we want to keep it so we're going to have another timestamp let's call it output specifier specifier right and then eventually we're going to return a uh, movie right so we're going to um, create a movie uh movie and we could also pass the name doesn't matter we can just say that new movie a string name let's just call it uh, uh, null and then uh, a specifier is going to be output a specifier right this is what's going to happen after when we create the movie we want to print it and eventually we're going to return this movie in this static method but then here we're going to read this text file line by line so read the text file line by line and then um, and then parse e each line so parse each line to a movie clip which we already know how to do it there is a method inside the movie clip that parses a string right so we're just going to create a scanner a scanner a new a scanner and then uh, uh, let's put it in try with resources so it automatically calls the close method on this source is going to be new file we're going to pass the uh, file name okay and then it's going to throw exception let's just catch it uh, catch it file not found exception and uh, we're going to say that uh, while a scanner has next line we're going to say that uh, uh, we create a movie clip new movie clip right and um, we're actually not going to call the constructor we're going to call the parsed uh, uh, sorry we're going to mo say movie clip dot parse a string because now each line is a string so a scanner dot next line and next line automatically removes the backslash n the line separator which is very good we get this clip and then we say that uh, movie dot add the movie clip clip that's it right and eventually we return the movie so that's very easy right because uh, the main part is this one to parsing each line of text in this text file to a movie clip which automatically has already been implemented right and then obviously after the movie is returned we should give it a name right we call the set name method and give it a proper name so um, let's comment these out let's create a uh, file name a string file name is uh, uh, let's copy these so test two i'm going to remove these headers for now and uh, remember that right now these are based on the start time all right so uh, but unfortunately the problem here is that we said that when you call the parse a string um, so right now uh, i guess we're not using this input a specifier so uh, we're going to parse the string for now because this parse string assumes the duration right assumes duration so we're not directly using this one but then uh, i guess when we set the clip we can say clip dot set the timestamp specifier and put it as the input all right so we have this uh, test two and uh, it has uh, uh, basically three lines and then um, uh, and then uh, we're going to say uh, movie let's see if we can parse it movie is uh, movie parse text file file name and then input a specifier is um, it should be duration let's say let's okay let's set it to duration output a specifier let's set it to a start time all right 
Let's do a sys out on this movie. And now the name is null. Obviously, after we get the movie, we should uh, give it a name. Movie set name, some movie, some awesome movie. So some awesome movie timestamp format is a start time zero zero and so um, the question here is that why is it that we're getting so the reason is that these are based on the start time not the duration so let's say the first one has a duration of 10 the second one two minutes and the third one one hour 15 minutes so let's see and now uh, and then we're printing based on the start time right so this is the output specify which means what happens what gets printed when the movie we call it to a string or save the movie timeline so the first one is zero the second one the duration of the first one is 10 so the start time of the second one is 10 the duration of the first and second one is 12 minutes three seconds so the third one starts at 12 minutes three seconds into the movie right now we can do other things let's say uh, uh, end time so when it gets printed, uh, the first one ends at 10 seconds in, right? Because its duration is 10 seconds, 10 minutes, sorry. The second one uh, starts at uh, 12.03. That's because the duration of the first one is 10. The duration of the second one is 2.03. So the end time of the second one is 12.3. And the third one ends at 127.8, right? Because... 1203 plus 115.05 is 127.08. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue our uh, discussion on the project that we were working on, which was uh, creating a Java project that can uh, uh, basically process uh, movie timelines if we have multiple clips and basically it can create a, a nicely formatted text file that has all the timeline correctly calculated based on the duration of the clips that we add to the movie and we started with the timestamp class that uh, has the task of uh, properly or correctly format the hours minutes and seconds that's just a timestamp and then each movie clip has a timestamp and a duration and the movie is just a collection of the movie clips and we had it with the array list of movie clips right and then we said that the most important method in the movie is the add movie clip and when we add a clip a few things must happen before adding this clip to the array list of the movie clips right before adding it to the collection and one is uh, obviously first we have to ch change the timestamp specifier based on the a specifier that we choose for the timeline of the movie it could be a start time end time or duration right and then uh, because we're adding clips we have to each movie clip can have a, a starting offset in uh, in seconds right so by default each clip if it's just an individual clip by itself it's starting offset is zero seconds but then if it's part of a movie then it can have an offset so uh, we have to set the offset and the way we calculate the offset is we have this total seconds elapse and each time we add a clip, we calculate its length or duration using this get total seconds method of the clip and add it to the total seconds elapsed, right? So when we add a clip, the total seconds elapsed for the movie increases, right? And then this becomes the starting point or the offset of the next clip that we add. So initially it's zero. So the first clip starts at zero and then the total time elapsed becomes the duration of the first clip. And then we add it to the movie clips and then the second clip uh, starts at the offset of the first clip and so on right so let's head to eclipse and try to so we had this uh, project uh, movie timeline so we have utils it's a utility class which only had one method two double digits timestamp specifies an enum timestamp is just a simple class movie clip and then movie right so let's head to movie clip and try to uh, uh, change some stuff. So the first thing that we changed in in the movie clip was parse string. We said that instead of manually writing a for loop and going through the string to find the first uh, white space, we're going to use the index of method. So let's remove these. 
Now the other thing that we want uh, to see if what happens if uh, let's also so we want to let's also support uh, um, uh, minutes and seconds and name right so let's also support this format and this format uh, basically when we find the first white space and then a split or get the substring for the timestamp it could be either uh, it could be hours, minutes, seconds, or it could be minutes, seconds, right? This is just something that we want to also support. And it's very easy to support. So when we split on the uh, column, right, we can check the length of the args. So right now, originally, we assume that its uh, length is three. So we can say if uh, args.length equals three, we're going to do this return new movie clip and parsing the integers so the zeros element is the hours the first element is the minutes and the, um, and then the third element is the seconds but then if the length is two uh, so else uh, if uh, args dot length equals two and then um, we're going to say that hours is just zero, right? There is no hours, it's just minutes and seconds. Else, we're going to throw an exception, throw illegal format exception, uh, throw new illegal format exception. Uh, time is, or uh, wrong uh, format for time stamp. Something like this. And this is a checked exception, so um, uh, illegal format exception, let's see, is uh, not with, so illegal format exception, uh, it's a private, so we cannot, so we could just uh, uh, create our own exception, or we could just assume that uh, 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 new uh, runtime exception for example let's see if we can throw this and say that uh, timestamp format is not supported so this is something so let's try it in the main method of the movie clip let's see so we're going to parse this obviously we don't care how many uh, white spaces are there uh, let's say we have a movie clip that has two minutes and three seconds. So we parse it two minutes, three seconds, zero hours. But what if uh, we don't specify the hours? Two minutes, three seconds. Uh, index to out of bounds for length. Okay, so that's because we have to start with zero. Zero becomes minutes and then one becomes seconds. And two minutes, three seconds. So this is just some convenience. And then what happens if, um, now obviously we saw that even if the minutes and seconds are beyond 60, it's going to format it correctly. That's just because the two string method is based on the, based on the timestamp. And the timestamp only takes the total seconds and automatically converts it correctly. However, we, in the movie, we actually did define hours, minutes in the movie clip. We had this, um, uh, minutes, uh, seconds, and hours, right? So if I do a sysout on the clip, our movie clip, dot seconds, you see that this is not correctly formatted. It's going to still be 300, right? And this is something that probably we don't want. So ha what's the easiest way to fix it? Now, first of all, we can remove these hours, minutes, and seconds because we didn't really use them because eventually this movie clip, we call the two string and the two string uses the uh, timestamp right or get uh, a start timestamp and end timestamp um, uh, uh, but then uh, um, we can also opt, instead of setting directly in the constructor we can remove this so total seconds this and then uh, we, we can also remove this instead we can call the uh, this dot set total seconds and then pass this uh, combination because regardless of the format of the seconds, minutes, and hours, we can convert it. And this one, uh, let's also remove these. What this going to do is uh, uh, 
it's going to uh, set the total seconds and then update the hours, minutes, and seconds. So if I do this and then do a sysout on the clip one dot seconds, now this should work correctly. Let's run this. So zero, so let's uh, go 307. And now you see 300 seconds, 307 seconds, and two minutes is seven minutes and seven seconds, and the seconds is now seven. All right. Now the other thing that you notice here is that all the fields here are uh, are are not public; they're package level access, right, or the default access. So anyone outside this package cannot use it, which is good. That's we just uh, it's better to expose them using setters and getters. But then, uh, um, so uh, this, uh, this basic fixes this, but there is a, a, a very a small issue that we also need to fix is, um, so when we, um, so basically we said that when we set the offset, we have to update the timestamps, right? But then uh, what about when we set the total seconds? So um, basically, we update hours, minutes, seconds, but then uh, uh, because the offset has not changed, so no need to change uh, a start timestamp, right? Because it's still there. We, total seconds here applies to duration, but we have to, we should update the, uh, because the duration has changed, we have to update the end timestamp, right? So end timestamp like this so offset plus get total seconds or we can just say offset plus uh, yeah we can just leave it like this or we can just pass in the total seconds that's also fine all right so that's another thing that we have to uh, take care uh, everything is still works fine yes okay and then uh, um Let's uh, back, head back to our PowerPoint slides and now let's look at an example. Let's say we are uh, creating a, uh, a lecture. We record uh, like four lectures and now we want to combine them into one lecture, upload it to YouTube and create a timeline that tells the viewers what is the start time of each lecture. So the goal is to get the start time. But uh, for us, it's very easy to know the duration of each in individual lecture you just open it in a movie player and it immediately gives you the it immediately gives you the uh, duration so the way i do it um let's uh, open a new file here right and then what we're going to do we're going to say that uh, lecture one is 22 minutes so i'm going to add the hours also 22 minutes 12 seconds and it's going to be implementing the timestamp class this is the first lecture and then uh, implementing the movie class. That's our second lecture. And it's going to be 22 minutes and then 27 seconds. Let's say the third lecture is implementing a parse string, a parse string. And it's going to be uh, 20 minutes. Let's also add the hours, 20 minutes. 30. Again, at the moment, we don't need to add the hours. Let's just leave it out, that's fine. And then uh, um, uh, the fourth lecture is implementing movie class. And it's going to be uh, 30 minutes. So 30 minutes and then 49 seconds. All right. So and then uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do, I'm going to save it somewhere on the desktop. Let's say untitled or example.txt. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going, so next, what we, now that we have a, uh, basically uh, a text file of the name of the clips and then the duration, we can uh, create movie clips based on them and set the time specified as the duration and then create a movie, add those clips to it and then change the timestamp specifier of the movie, which also gets applied to all movie clips to a start time instead of duration, right? And then uh, when we save the timeline of the movie to the text file, it's going to automatically calculate the start times of the clips based on the duration, which is a very convenient thing. But we also added the 
parse text file so we can read this text file and then uh, uh, directly parse it so let's head here so in the movie uh, we had a main method here let's just uh, delete this and I am going to um, uh, maybe uh, let's see so example one I'm going to copy it here in my Eclipse Res rename it to example one refactor rename okay example one.txt and then uh, we're going to say that um, so in the movie uh, main method, we're going to say that, uh, 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 let's say uh, file name is uh, from wherever we are in the resources. Let's copy it and paste it in the editor. We're going to say example one.txt. And then we're going to say movie, movie, or let's call it lectures is movie dot. And this is supposed to be a string movie dot uh, parse text file file name input a specifier is duration that's the specifier in the example right these are these timestamps are basically uh, duration but the output specifier we want to set the uh, start time a specifier all right and then uh, lectures dot save to file and uh, um, let's just copy this and say uh, lectures uh, uh, timeline underscore timeline dot txt. All right, let's see if this works. Everything looks good, and we're going to have our lectures timeline. And it says that the timestamp format is a start time. And we also needed we said that when we parse the text file, uh, the the name of the lecture is not set. So lectures set name uh, lectures. All right, let's run this one more time. And if you look at the lectures is now is a movie lectures and timestamp. And so uh, let's put this side by side. So the first lecture uh, has a duration of 20 minutes, 12 seconds. And we know that the first lecture starts at an offset of zero. And so the start time of the second lecture is going to be uh, the duration of the first one. The third one, should uh, start at the combined duration of the first and second which is uh, 44 minutes and then 39 seconds right that's the start time and that's the combined duration the fourth one should uh, start at the combined duration of the third uh, the first three lectures right so it's um, so 44 39 plus 20 uh, 39 it's uh, 39 plus 39 is uh, 78 we reduce 60 so 18 seconds and then uh, 44 plus 21 is uh, 65 so we reduce 60 we get the 5 and 1 hour so uh, that's how uh, our uh, simple uh, java uh, project can quickly help us to build the timelines and we want because creating the a list of the name of the movie clips and the duration is very easy but then uh, converting them to the start time and end time might not be easy right so i hope you enjoyed this lecture and now have a nice understanding of uh, how this works please stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one